Hi everyone, this is Heather Lawton and from the Flourish Academy and in this video I'm going to share my top favorite Lightroom shortcuts. But first, make sure you check out our sponsor ymcamera.com for all of your photography needs. You'll find their prices to be comparable and their shipping is ultra fast. This video is the first in a series that I'm putting together to help you expedite your workflow. My goal for every session, let me clarify, every portrait session, this excludes weddings, is to have it processed in one hour. And I think one of the biggest contributors to that is my use of keyboard shortcuts. It was very difficult for me to narrow this down to my top 10 favorite, but my hope is that by sharing them with you, you will also improve the efficiency of your workflow. The first is Command Shift I, that's Control Shift I on the PC. And that's just a really quick way to access your import dialog box. I'm currently in the grid view in the library module, but I'll press E to jump to loop view. That's one image at a time and G to get back to grid. I use these all the time. They're definitely worth committing to memory. Also, in order to get to the develop module, I simply press D on my keyboard. D is for develop. That makes sense. But did you know that you could also press E to go back to loop view in the library module? And G would do the same thing. It would take you back to the library module, but it would put you inside of grid view. And before I move on to the next keyboard shortcut, I just want to show you how you can access all of these if you forget them. This is not one of my tips, but if you press command or control forward slash on your keyboard in any of the modules, Lightroom will show you all of the keyboard shortcuts. You could print this and highlight the ones that are important to you until you commit them to memory. The next shortcut that I really enjoy using is the tab key. Pressing the tab key will either reveal or hide your side panels. Holding down shift and pressing the tab key will remove all of the panels and shift and tab will bring all of the panels back into view. And while we're here, let's press L on our keyboard in order to turn the lights off. This is the lights off mode. If you press it several times in Lightroom, you can see that everything dims and then goes all the way off. I have mine set to gray. You could set this background to either black or white, but this is also helpful when you are in loop view so that you can just isolate the image and look at the images independently without being distracted with all of the information. But remember to press L to bring everything back. One of my most used keyboard shortcuts in Lightroom is X. X stands for reject. It will reject, but not delete your photo. And then I like to turn on the filter in order to hide all of the rejected photos. That is to say, it will just show me my unflagged photos. So now if I press X on the keyboard, it will reject and that photo will disappear. Now, if you accidentally reject a photo that you really need, you can simply turn off the filter, go back to that photo and press U in order to unflag it. Now, I know a lot of you use P in order to pick your photos. That's fine. It's just a different approach to selecting the images you wish to edit on. But either way, knowing that X rejects, P will pick, and you will unflag is very helpful. And while we're talking about this, just a moment ago, I said I like to turn on the filter to just show me my unflagged photos. That is the photos I have not rejected. I just like to hide them from my view. But did you know that there's a really quick way to toggle on and off your last filter selected? And that's with Command or Control L on the keyboard. So you can turn your library filters off or turn them back on and it will just toggle with the last one that you had on. So I was using this flag filter, but if I were using the five star filter, for instance, I could press command or control L to turn that filter off and then command or control L to turn it back on. So it's just important to note that it will toggle back and forth between the last used filter. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video.